This interview you're about to see is with someone who began mirror writing nearly 20 years ago after being inspired by two famous mirror writers, the Italian Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci and Alice in Wonderland author Lewis Carroll. As a researcher and psychology professor at Dawson College, Concordia, and McGill Universities in Montreal, Canada, Dr. Sheila Robinson brought together her work in the field of visual perception to create MirrorRead.com, a website that presents research findings on the benefits of mirror reading, as well as a browser tool and app that actually lets you mirror read from your computer or smartphone. This tool is something that I now use often ever since discovering it nearly two years ago. In this edited interview, I highlight what Dr. Robinson has to say about the mental benefits we experience when mirror reading, as well as the physical changes that take place in the brain. These changes include an increased activation of both hemispheres, a structural improvement of glial cells within the corpus callosum, the growth of gray matter in the right hemisphere, improved working memory, mental rotation skills, and more. This original conversation is over an hour long, where we share even more, including details of my own experience of working to develop mirror movements, much of which is presented at length in my book, Big 3 MMD, Histories Ambidextrous, and the Benefits of Mirror Movement Development. If you want to see the original uncut conversation, you'll find a link in the video description below. Well, it's good to see you again. I know last time uh, I saw you, geez, our, our last time via Zoom, that was, geez, I want to say it was like two years ago. Yep. You've yeah. been busy? Yeah, I've been busy. What? I have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been busy. I found it very interesting, Jim. Honestly, it's cool. really well done. I'm not just like propping you there. I learned a lot. The details of some of the people I knew about, you went into quite a bit of depth. Um, mm -hmm. And quite frankly, Ben Franklin didn't know anything about. And all of the applications for using both um, left and right sides in terms of health, you went into them in ways that I haven't. I, I'm, I'm more up here in terms of my research, and you're definitely a whole body, which I really, mm -hmm. really like. We've experienced something unique. Not everybody understands that it takes a little bit of going through difficult times. Like you actually had an injury that compelled you. I didn't come from an injury, but I certainly don't find what I'm doing easy. Not always fun. It takes focus and effort. It makes my brain warm. It's a leap of faith. It's a bit of a commitment. It's like, do I really want to do this? Like, yeah, yeah. It's low cost, low effort, highly efficient. It doesn't require teaching. It's really autodidact to be what we're talking about. And um, it's fun even after a while. Crazy. Body memory mm -hmm. is big deal. We can do it without thinking after a while. What I'm also recognizing is that when I'm writing from right to left with my left hand, because I'm a righty, um, I can actually get into a flow, mm -hmm. like that moment of it stops being excruciating and I'm actually able, I realize I'm thinking about something else and I'm still writing and it's, wow, mm -hmm. something's changed. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's tangible. It doesn't last necessarily, but I like that feeling of it eases up. What ultimately inspired you to start Miri.com? Um, once upon a time, I was writing backwards letters to other people. And that was an idea that I just thought every so often I'd pick up a piece of paper and I'd write with my left hand or I'd mirror right. And I don't know where I thought it was going to take me, but it was always in the back of my head. At some point, there was sort of this app craze in 2010. And I'm like, oh, I've got to do something on mirror reading. And nothing was done. And I, I didn't quite understand the whole process at that point, but I ended up getting help from developers and doing what um, was originally the MR app, like the MR uh, classic, um, but it was cumbersome. And I was trying to do research at the same time. And what I really wanted to do was take the internet and turn it backwards because my participants were having to read photocopies of acetates. It was very environmentally unfriendly, mm -hmm. cumbersome. And, um, if I could get them to read what they were already reading, like People Magazine Online, for example, which is what a couple of them really thought would get them reading, 
Um, if I could get that, then they would probably practice. When I started this, like I am a teacher and I and I used to have competitions with my students, but I, I bet you you would be very impressive. I'm not sure I want to go against you. Oh my gosh, geez. Yeah, not to toot any of our own horns, but I mean, I, I do feel like I am very fast with it now. And it's funny because it's something I talk about in Big 3MMD, that concept of manual transfer learning where your dominant side actually gains proficiency when you focus simply on that less dominant side. After I spend time mirror reading, I then go to do something in traditional reading and I can read it so much faster. What's going on with the brain? All that neuro nerdy stuff. What's really happening? For anyone who's a self-improvement person, a brain person, what's happening when we're doing mirror reading? For people who are decoding, reading regular text, there's a lot of like asymmetry in the brain as you've talked about. And the left side of the brain, as controversial as it can be to like designate left versus right, left brain does seem to be more active when we're doing things like reading regular text or doing math or something sequential or rule driven. So when we mirror read, the neuroimaging shows activation on not only the left, but also the right side. So there's a few different things and a lot of different ways of interpreting this. And really what needs to happen is more research at the neuroscience level, doing more MRIs, pre-post testing, maybe getting you into some sort of a protocol because you'd be a, an interesting case study. Your brain might have changed considerably. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious to know a little bit about the uh, glial structures of your corpus callosum, that mm -hmm. tissue that binds the left and right hemispheres. Other people who have done the research, Rudiger Ilg, for example, um, out of Germany, had some really great neuroimaging um, studies that showed quite definitively the gray matter growth increased in the right hemisphere. There was a decrease in activation in the right frontal lobe, suggesting that after a little bit of practice, we get better at it so our brain doesn't light up quite as much. That's a good thing. We concentrate the activity where the mental rotation is important, which is what I'm interested in, transfer mm -hmm. skills, because mm -hmm. I want to know that if I'm mirror reading, I'm doing something that activates my brain, but I'm hoping it has a benefit. Well, what could be a benefit? Maybe it's transferring to regular reading skills and getting even better. Or maybe I'm getting better at navigation because it's a spatial rotation experience. Maybe I'm getting better at designing. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm getting better at imagining and creating. Mm -hmm. So those are the studies that I would love to read. Maybe somebody who's watching this wants to know that there's a big gap in the literature. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who don't know how important this is. So what you're doing is really important. Uh, keep shouting it out. And re mirror reading research is just at the basics right now. Well, let's quantify better. We want to know what that means specifically, behaviorally or neuroscientifically. Um, and so it's, it's pretty good that you are showing yourself to be a role model of how to just explore. We don't have to have all the proof for us to be curious about what we can become. We are really touching very important brain structures when we even bother to look at the left hand. And I was interested in the essay that you mentioned with Benjamin Franklin. Oh, like, oh yeah. And I'm like, it's true because this right hand gets given a lot of opportunities to hold and touch and left hand just gets left alone unless right hand is hurt and uh yeah i'm a switch i'm a switch snowboarder um mm -hmm. like yourself so i i want to acknowledge the efforts of the left side but i like i i'm one of these oddly wired people too because i have a right hand dominant but i'm goofy foot mm -hmm. so i don't really know like what that's all about consider that we're living in a very rarefied time we're at the last layer of a, a like epochs of humanity who have not lived in worlds that had letters mm -hmm. they were probably in times past much more apt to have symmetrical brains because they weren't focusing on language decoded in a specific way we are hothouse flowers our ancestors i think were probably more bilateral than us and stronger as a result yeah. of it we're lucky to be the the for like the, the children of such strong people, we're not using the brains the way they could be used. 
I had students a couple of years ago do a research study and their study was decoding reversed musical scripts. So I don't even read music, Normal. but they were playing the flute with a, with a, a, a sheet of music that had been mirrored and they were able to, it took, it took them um, a, a moment to acquire that new opportunity oh. to shift. So they didn't play their flutes backwards. You know, you don't have a backwards flute, but they were decoding on the fly backwards. I thought that's pretty cool. Interesting. That's special. How, uh, and what were their ages? Uh, 17. One of them was singing. One of them, so they were, it was a flautist and a singer. And so one of them was re mirror, mirror singing. She was mirror singing. And the other one was reading music playing. My major goal with MMD is to see it taught in schools and universities. I mm -hmm. really want to see this ultimately happen. Um, and it's so cool, especially since you mentioned it earlier, Benjamin Franklin's essay, he addressed that to educators. Yes. Address it to educators. He addressed it to educators the year that the school that he started ultimately became the first university in America, the University of Pennsylvania. You know, he and, and being a mirror reader for 30 years as a printer, his brain was obviously it just had to have been more symmetric. And, oh, yeah. And no, no exclusive right hander, I think, would ever conceive of writing what he wrote with that essay. I imagine him as a typesetter. All typesetters had to have that proficiency. But would you remain a typesetter? if you had other options, unless you were pretty good at it. And so I, I just, I can't imagine someone laying type all day. It just boggles my mind. But uh, very interesting that he was able to um, work it into the rest of his uh, literary career. He actually remarked upon it and the left-handedness was really interesting for him i think yeah obviously he was obviously a very observant person and much like da vinci he was just so observant of the human body he would have obviously realized the symmetry of the skeleton the symmetry of the exterior features and even the symmetric weight distribution of the whole organic system bilaterally and i think to honor that he would have chosen to write left-handed mirror because sources say that he also wrote right-handed traditional and he was doing that since before the age of 21 and I don't consider myself anybody special. I mean, just like you, I was right-handed my whole life, but I've just chosen to develop that left-handed side, mostly in mirror direction over these last couple of years. And there's nothing of the human body that says that it's not made for that. It, it's, it's mechanically designed for that. Yeah. And I, I, I'm convinced that if aliens came here to earth and they would ask us anything, I guarantee they would ask like, why did 90% of you only use one hand? for most everything and not the other. Like, don't you guys realize you're designed for both sides? Um, and yet, and yet, quite spontaneously, children do start to reach with one hand and right-handedness is just a more common ratio of that ability. So mm -hmm. there is some natural innate element to right and left handedness. I don't really know much beyond that, but I know that even in non-writing societies, maybe just in, in societies that are doing a lot of manual like movements, they're yeah. still right handed reaching there's a dominance if you're going to throw stuff it's more likely that there will develop more one side why though mm -hmm. even in or the that. womb they show that even in the womb most kids will start sucking their right thumbs oh, and, really? and i mean for me i think it's just one of these things that once you start once you choose a handedness um your propensity to continue with that will just will just go on that That's a way. Good so whatever it is that we choose, you're going to continue to go down that route. And in a microevolutionary way, if I understand what genetics really is, it's because our ancestors have chosen to do things for such a long time, whether that's because of their own choice or external influences have, have caused that. Um, yeah. And so we're going to see that. But just like MMD, it's choosing to say, OK, I'm going to choose to do this on that less intuitive side in this mirror okay. motion. And for, for a lot of activities, that's just intuitive until you go to reading and writing 
And that's only because we've chosen to go in one direction. But you think of like the ancient Greeks, the ancient Greeks, they had Vostrophanon. They had a language, a written language that went both directions since the 12th century. You know, so they, they, something of them, they understood the symmetry of the body. We should be honoring this. We should be doing this. So um, or why not? It was just like, of course, like, why not? This is yeah. what we can do. We're doing it. There's no reason to think otherwise. Let's read in both directions. We can make that motion meaningful. Mm -hmm. It's us who have succumbed to this. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Dominance. That's not necessary. I find that very interesting. I really never thought about that before. Now, what is physically going on in the body when we say this is hard? I don't want to do it because because mechanically speaking, we have the same amount of muscles, joints, ligaments, sinew on, on both sides. So mm -hmm. as a machine, we're mechanically designed for that mirror movement. But there's something happening in the brain body relationship that's saying this is hard. Don't want to do it. And I have this other side that's even better. So, of course, I'm just going to continue doing it. And no one else around me would question it otherwise. So why not? But but what is physically happening that makes it hard? I'll give you my best shot because I'm not as knowledgeable on that side of things at all. But I know that difficulties are associated with frustration, being thwarted, not finding something easy. And anything that's habitual, anything that we've learned over time, anything that we've practiced becomes easier. So to challenge that in and of itself brings discomfort, atypicality, or it's abnormal. So maybe that's a part of it. It's just like, uh what had been easy or what I wanted to be straightforward, it's like a bump in the road. Mm -hmm. And we've been, we've been evolved to approach that atypicality. Like, well, is there a better way? Is there an a usual way? Like go back, go back to what we know. So in order to develop that less like commonly used side, there is gonna be a feeling of discomfort. Mm -hmm. It's just novelty. Novelty is not um, digestible by a lot of people because it means using new muscle fibers or new channels across the brain. But it's a moment. A lot of us can toughen up our brains just a little bit by like, hold on, hold on, you can do it. Build up like you did. Short times become longer times. Maintenance is everything. Maintenance. So have confidence in ourselves that like we, we can watch ourselves develop. Don't we want to see ourselves change in ways that are useful and this seems to be useful yeah 100 percent. and i feel like it's it's the the thing that makes us the most useful that many of us have never considered or if we've considered it it's just been fleeting when we look in the mirror and you see two eyeballs two nostrils two ears uh symmetric lips i mean you, you go like this and you think oh okay cool whatever that's good but then we go back to reading in just one direction you go to open a can of tuna and you're using a can opener designed for just one hand. You hop in your car and all the, the stuff on the council is always on that right side. So, so, you know, then it's easy to forget it and lose it. But it, it is, it's all about that development. And for people who want to do that, this is the major way to do it. But it is the thing that takes the longest, especially for us as adults who have spent so many years not doing it. But kids would instinctively pick it up. Well, kids well, instinctively do. already do it. And oh, it's yeah. only until us as adults come along and we're like, stop doing it that way. Oh, yeah. That's not Absolutely. the right way, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, and I know that for certain because I produce these children's books in backwards text. And they're to be written, they're there to be read in a mirror. So you can have really interesting eye contact experiences and, and read together, not just looking down. But what ended up happening oh. in, inevitably is that they would hold up the book and then they would start reading it. And then it'd be like, I'm faster than you, mom. Yeah. I'm faster than you, dad. And their brains picked it up. And then the parents were worried that their brain was going to be in training the wrong direction. Oh, and I, know. I talked to several sets of parents over quite a long um, span of time. I didn't do the research on it, but I came back to them like, what were your children's developmental milestones like after that? And all of them were fine, typical, normal, and maybe even proficient readers. There was not one who got stuck, mm -hmm. which was a, you know, a really gratifying thing for me to learn. I don't want to hurt anybody, but why? Uh, by doing this, but 
that's not what young brains do. Young brains are way more limber. They figure it out and they don't get that confused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know when I tell people, I just try to say, like the layman science of it, whenever you do anything in mirrored motion, you're sending blood flow to that opposite brain hemisphere. Yep. That blood flow has oxygen. That oxygen is creating new neurons, new synapses. It's making your corpus callosum bigger, which is the communication bridge in between the two hemispheres. It's allowing better communication between both hemispheres. It's, incre it's increasing your memory recollection. Great things are happening. But then if they were to happen to see like, oh my gosh, my kids are now writing backwards. It's the end of the world. The bigger thing, and I want to just grab the world and shake it and be like, no, we messed up in choosing just one directionality. We messed up. And we mess up every single time we choose to shake hands with only one hand. We Same thing with whatever thing that we choose to make with just one side. We've completely messed up, but we don't even realize it. As a result of what you're doing now, we're going to be learning more about other people who have these proficiencies. Not everything has been revealed yet. Mm -hmm. once upon a time i um i met a guy named kevin o'leary i don't know if that's a name that means anything to you he's a canadian who um told me that he had trouble reading when he was young and so the story goes he was encouraged by one of his teachers to read his books economics texts in a mirror seemed to be what worked for him so i didn't hear him say this to me directly but he's like oh everybody knows about this like like this is no big deal and i, I was like okay so kevin o'leary knows a little bit about mirroring and i think that that might be one of his secrets he's kind of a successful guy i know one thing i did want to ask you also when i explain this concept to people uh they'll talk about oh it's a brain exercise kind of like sudoku i'm like well like better, but, but, but okay. Like, yes, it's a brain exercise. Sudoku is a brain exercise. Of course. I, wait, wait, wait. Things. I do mirror Sudoku too. Mirror Sudoku is totally harder. Oh like, my I can do gosh. Some, I can do Sudoku, but I'm not really very good at it. But if I do it backwards, oh my gosh, it's a brand new game. It's really interesting. It's on wow. my website. Take a look. I, I know my, I want to know about when it comes to Alzheimer's, Huntington's because yeah, 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 pe yeah. people will bring that up when I mentioned this as a brain thing. They're like, Oh, well, what is that for Huntington's uh, for, for dementia, for Alzheimer's? So do, do you have much research on that? The core comes back to something you already mentioned, which is, it seems like this has something to do with memory. It can actually help memory, but there's a few different kinds of memory. And one of the kinds of memory that I'm particularly interested in is working memory. And that's the ability to maybe hold an object in your mind and do something else at the same time or hold two different objects in your mind and mentally manipulate them. So working memory is the core of lots of other kinds of memory. And what we want to be able to do is develop working memory skills in order to be able to transfer those skills to lots of other brain practices and manipulations. So working memory is something that's worth developing and working memory seems to be stimulated by mirror reading. Mm. So there's something about this as we read and we transform and we make sense of different groupings visually of letters and words, it's a more complicated experience. At least at the beginning, working memory is taxed. As we do it, it becomes easier, but working memory is still engaged because we have to do a whole bunch of unusual things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So your answer is it's, we don't really know about the longitudinal outcomes associated with mirror reading practice, but elders who have dementia can still learn to do it. So that's mm -hmm. interest, interesting on its own. If you've got, somebody who likes word games, who is an elder, you might encourage them to take a look at their favorite newspaper or their favorite line of a book that you can find online and mirror it for them and hmm. just see if they can start to pull out meaning from an unusual stimuli and lots of them can. Hmm. So I think it shows that there's neuroplasticity 
in all ages of brains and that we can maybe hurt one part of our brain and rewire even in our old age. So I do it now. I mirror read a lot because I want to keep my brain alive. I really don't know if it's preventative against anything like Alzheimer's, but which I have on lots of sides of my family, but I'm, I'm playing the odds and I want to do things that keep me limber, like playing chess and snowboarding and mirror reading because mm -hmm. who knows? And I hopefully will be able to read about research where people have actually said, yeah, we've got to do the longitudinal research with Alzheimer's patients or Huntington's patients. Let's just inspire people to search on their own now and be curious about what they find out about themselves. I will tell them, go to mirrory.com. You can read about the research of it, but more importantly, get that web browser tool, just do a quick little drag and drop of it. And so for folks who would say, all right, well, how does this work? So um, the home screen will pop up, but then go to mirror uh, MR bookmark right here. And then here is uh, that tool and you just drag and drop it right there. So, and then for me, it already pops up right here. And then you can go ahead and dun -dun -dun, mirror it. And then for me, I have right here my ink pad notepad. And um, if I want to say type, 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 I can do that. But then if I want to go ahead and mirror it, I just hit that. And then I can actually go ahead and do even more type. Ah, you're so type. ahead of me. I don't do type. all oh, that. Oh, Sheila, you have no idea. And it's, again, if there's any downside to this, you will always just want to continue practicing it because just like someone who goes to the gym, you get in that flow, you get in that feeling of how great your body feels when you go to the gym all the time to the fact, to the point, to the point where you don't want to not go anymore. I just, I always want to do it. So there will be a, a time people will realize this is useful and interesting. It's not just a novelty and faster than one might realize. There's yeah. already that ability that's sort of built in from like the scanning process in the brain is still being used so you're building on um, an already developed uh, process so mm -hmm. yeah proficiency is acquired faster um, and the question is what are the variables how often you practice of course it has something to do with it, the the uh, level of reading um, and what you want to recall as well so not just reading but reading to think about what we're reading so there's a few different levels and if people really make an effort. Um, it's like anything, going to the gym doesn't happen overnight. We're in a, a, a society that wants a quick solution, but this is a yeah. patient sort of experience. And I've had people who are physiotherapists learn through my app to mirror read. And they're like, oh, I have such a different perspective of my patients who have had strokes and they're relearning to read. I have such compassion because I'm finding it hard to learn this skill. And that's an interesting element I'd never considered is one has a, an opportunity to go back to school and remember what it's like to learn. And that's humbling. Sheila, this was awesome. Um, thank you. You're very welcome. This. Thank you. Thanks for asking.